This, my friends, is the brand new 2024 Honda CB500 Horner. And while it is largely the same as the previous gen CB500, there are some really nice little tweaks for the new model year. So is this the little middleweight A2 naked bike that you should be buying in 2024? Well, in this video, we'll go through all of the details to find out. Let's start with the engine. It's a little 471cc parallel twin. They use this engine in pretty much all of their 500 bikes like the NX500 Naked and the CL500 Scrambler. And they've been using it for years now. So it really is a proven performer and super reliable. Generally, I would say a 180 degree crank in a parallel twin isn't normally my cup of tea just because of the way it sounds and feels. It's not quite as exciting as something that feels a bit more v twinny. But I've got to say, I've really, really enjoyed riding this bike today. And even though it's only 47 horsepower and I think 43 newton meters of peak torque, it just really enjoys revving up. It likes being between that sort of range of six to 8,000 RPM and it feels quite peppy and sporty. So yeah, very impressed with it. Nice gearbox, slip assist clutch, so nice and light. And so all in, I'd say a lot more fun than I expected it to be on paper. Then you got the practical side as well. It absolutely sips fuel and they've been really quite generous with this fuel tank. It's 17.1 liters, which is quite a lot for a smallish capacity naked bike. And so of course, with those two things combined, you've got really quite impressive range figures. The other thing that makes this bike quite a lot of fun to ride out on the road as well is the handling. You've got that peppy engine singing along, but also it's a nice, light little bike, it's under 190 kilograms curb. And then you've also got really quite decent componentry in terms of the chassis hardware. So a Showa upside down fork, there's a pair of four piston radially mounted Nissan calipers on the brakes there. And also these Michelin Road 6 tires, which are great all rounders and perfectly suited to this sort of riding. And so yeah, with something that's physically quite small, it's not particularly heavy. And then you've got the good level of componentry. You know, there are no big surprises. It goes nicely around corners, it stops really well I like the feel on the lever of the brakes as well and it just feels easy and nimble and flickable and really good fun to ride on little country roads like these. As for the ergonomics well it is a pretty standard sort of naked riding position and to me it feels really comfortable and versatile and I can imagine doing commuting and practical kind of riding as well as doing the slightly sportier stuff as well but I should point out the seat height is really quite low at 785 millimeters. I'm not exactly toweringly tall I'm five foot nine or a 175 centimeters and to me it's on the cusp of starting to feel a little bit too small now i think for newer riders and anyone who is a bit shorter in the leg it probably is actually like a really positive thing but just if you're on that slightly taller end of the spectrum getting on for like six foot i think it's something i'd be checking out and if you are keen on this sort of bike but maybe you've sat on it and you do find it a bit small then definitely check out the nx 500 which is the adventure bike equivalent of this but sits way up at 830 mil which is a really substantial difference. Now let's jump into some of those things that are new for 2024 and I think the most noticeable one certainly when you're sat on the bike anyway is this TFT display. It's five inches full color and I'd say a huge step up from the LCD dash on the previous gen of these bikes. Now look I don't think I'm the first person to say that Honda aren't necessarily the most flamboyant with their designs sometimes and the way that this dash is laid out is pretty true to form. It's very practical, precise, clean looking if a little lacking in drama but Tim's holding the camera we've been riding both this bike and the NX 500 today and I think he put it quite nicely in that he hasn't really thought about the dash at all it's never too dim and you're annoyed because it's not super visible and it's never at the other end of the spectrum where you're like wow look at that amazing animation or crazy feature it's just kind of in the middle it's not super exciting but it just does its job really really well now to match this new dash you've also got new switch gear so you've got a little bit of a direct directional pad there so you can navigate some of the new menus and stuff and you also get some phone connectivity and features like navigation through the dash although we haven't really checked those out today. What I really do like though on a bike at this price point is to see backlit buttons on the switch gear which can be a massive help if you do ride at night if you're commuting year round for example and when it's really cold quite often you'll have winter gloves on that are quite thick and so occasionally you do need a little bit of a glance down to hit the right switch. Now on top of that slightly updated tech package we've also got a new visual style you can see the big changes this stacked headlight at the front but also some extra tweaks to the bodywork here and there and you've got a new tail section I like those little holes through it it actually looks quite a bit more like 
the CB750 Hornet now, which I think for most people is a good thing to get a bike at a lower price point that has a shade of the slightly more premium alternative in the lineup. In fact, I might even go so far as to say that they've done a slightly better job with this bike because it has a bit more of a distinctive face to it. I do think Honda played it slightly too safe with the headlight on the Hornet. It doesn't look quite as aggressive or interesting as it could have done. Whereas this, well, it's kind of like a new recognizable thing. They've used the same stacked headlight on the NX500 and I think it just brings it up to date, makes it look a bit more modern and also helps it stand out from the crowd a bit, which I think is something it really did need. So look, effectively what you've got here is more of the same with the CB500, but I think that tech update and also the new styling makes it quite a bit more desirable. The starting price now is £6,199, which I think is pretty reasonable when you look at the sort of level of componentry and spec that you're getting across the bike. And also one of the things that helps it stand out against some of the competition, like the KTM 390 Duke, or maybe even some of the smaller bikes like the BMW G310, is the fact that you get this parallel twin which is going to feel that bit more smooth and happy to rev. And I think, you know, it just feels a bit more sporty. Genuinely, we've both really enjoyed riding this bike today. It's one of those that you can absolutely pin it on the road without any threat of, you know, going crazy quick. But if you keep the engine spinning and also combined with that really lively and easy handling, you know, you can get a surprising amount of fun out of it. As always though, I'd love to know what you think of it, so do let us know down in the comments below. Also, if you do like the look of this sort of bike, but maybe you want something a bit more powerful and punchy, then there is the 750 Hornet, which makes more like 90 horsepower. We've made plenty of videos on that bike, so I'll make a playlist and we'll put it on the screen now so you can give it a click and give it a watch. Do hit subscribe as well if you want to see more of the latest motorcycle reviews like this right here on YouTube. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll see you in the next video.